Hey guys, today we are going to talk about a few cards that are surprisingly expensive. They have really crept up in price and will probably continue to do so for some time. So, we all know magic is an expensive hobby, but unlike most hobbies, you can actually potentially make money from it. Now, you do have to have old cards. The game has changed from sharking to speculating on modern cards to now just owning old cards. Glacials is a card from Alliance. It is very, very good. It is now surprisingly $10. If you had told me in Alliance, Alliance was not a great time for Magic. Most people were quitting during Alliance. It was not a, not really a memorable experience. The number one Alliance card was Bordavian Hordes. And Bordavian Hordes was a $20 card. I mean, it was, it cost as much as a playset of Force of Wills, but it was a terrible card. It was a 5-5 five, five for four, and you discard a card at random. But back then, that was like OP. So Glaciers was even much, much worse than even Force of Will. This was not a card that many people expected would be the current price it is, but hey, good for Glaciers. I mean, I was, I'm surprised to see at 10. 10 is really the price point that I, when I speculate on a lot of cards like Falia, I want them to get to 10. Because 10 means that the buy list is better than 50-50. All right, so in the video, I don't know if the video is out yet. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know if I'm still doing repacks on the channel. But I found one of these from a comic book store and it was the comic book itself cost, I think, $4.99. So in Texas, $5. 42 of tax and the comic book store only had one but they were telling me that they had a lot in the back so they only kept one in the front because they just didn't have any demand on it and he also was telling me that they no longer make the comic books that's interesting that is intriguing because i have seen i know that there are a lot of comic books out there and i know there's a lot of this particular promo out there it is a $27 promo, but it's always been at least $10. So this has always been something that is more valuable than the book that it comes with. And that's great. I mean, it's always been more valuable. So if you ever saw this promo, if you ever saw this comic book, snap by, double your money, no problem. And now the fact this card, I double checked, this card is in standard. I believe in, it's uh, going to be in Ixlon. Man, that's crazy. All right, next, let's talk about really amazing effects that do a lot, but cost a lot. This is the bread and butter of EDH. Just absurdly costly manner, win, game win, or win more cards. There are many of these, and actually we're getting one in Ixlon, right? Where it's like living dead for your graveyard. It's like a weird thing interacting with your graveyard. I like it. I like it. I always knew this card would be good, but it hit the uh, incredible mark of $10. And like I said, if you were able to buy this for $2 and now hit $10, you're good. Because a buy list on this is at least probably five. Well, let me put it this way. One of your friends would definitely pay you $5 for this card. And that's why I look at. I look, so the problem with like a $2 card, let's say a $2 card goes to $4. The buy list on that $4 card is still probably a dollar, maybe 75 cents. But when a card hits 10, what I've noticed, and this is how true, is if it hits 10 and stays at 10, your buy list is at least 5 for most cards. Exquisite Blood. All right, let's talk about Sanguine Blood and Exquisite Blood. So there was a time when Sanguine Blood was the $20 card and Exquisite Blood was the dollar card. And then suddenly the Sanguine Blood got reprinted. And it's going to be reprinted. And what's that set called? What is that set called? Ix no, it's not Ixlon. Iconic Masters, I believe. I know Sanguine Blood, the combo, the infinite combo piece, is going to be reprinted. And therefore, Exquisite Blood is now the older one that has not had a reprint yet. So when Exquisite Blood is reprinted, then the Sanguine Blood will go up. It's like, uh, it's a mess, right? 
But here's an interesting opportunity. Iconic Masters will have a lot of Sanguine Blood. Just a ton of Sanguine Blood. And that means Exquisite Blood will be expensive and Sanguine Blood will be cheap. It will not always be this way. I guarantee you they will reprint Exquisite Blood in a future set. Probably maybe in a recent set because it's so good. All right, let's talk about this. My gosh, this is a $10 card. I don't know how many copies of this I own, but I assume I own like a few. The interesting part about owning bulk of this age is no one would have ever wanted this card. This was never, so there's cards that you put in your trade binder because there's like a small percentage that they would someone would trade for it. But back to when Portal Second Age, all right, we didn't have trade binders, we had like plastic bags. We, no one wanted this card. This is not something, this is not a card. This is a card that you left at, in your drawer at home because no one would ever trade for it. But my gosh, it's a pirate with unblockability. It's actually good in a pirate deck because the pirates want to hit you and steal stuff. All the pirates are going up. Even that pirate that from Mirage where I have like a million copies of him, he's like four bucks now. Like he sucks, but he's a pirate. And all the pirates are going up because people want to make a pirate deck and there's not that many pirates. But man, 2-2, two, two, like this is Phantom Warrior and Phantom Warrior wasn't even considered that great back in the day. All right, here's, a, here's one that I love. Hatred, I believe, is on a reserve list. If it is, then I love the card even more. It's such a good card. It is such a good card. Um, it is amazing. And so if you are able to hit your opponent with a commander and you just hatred them and they just die, that's the best feeling. Uh, hatred is, I remember <laughs> playing, what was it? What deck was I playing? I was playing some hatred deck and the whole purpose of the deck was to deal uh, a few like, um, what was it, Scarum Phage or something, the 2-1 for the attacks or something, and you, it deals one damage to you like each turn or something. And you get one point, you get ahead by one life, then you get to five, you Dark Ritual into a Hatred, then you win the game. And the game's over. Or you have a Shadow Creature, and then you Hatred, and the game's over. Now, it could backfire on you pretty badly. They could kill your creature, right? They can just lightning bolt it and they would die. But definitely worth the risk, in my opinion, and people do like the card. I just kind of wish it was a better looking card. But uh, it is very good. All right. So if you ever were to find this in a store, yes, it's Commander 2016. If you found it at Toys R Us or, you know, Barnes & Noble's, Maybe a K, I don't know, Kmart. I heard Kmart's still in business. I don't know if they stock magic cards. They used to stock magic cards. A Target or a Target. Doesn't matter where you find this. Buy it. Just buy it. If you can get it from M MSRP, it is a hands down buy. I don't see this getting cheaper, in my opinion. I only really see it getting more and more expensive. And for the most part, these decks are not that common. It's interesting, right? 2017, they're saying that the decks will be very common and they'll do a second print run and everything will be good because they made a mistake in 2016. They should have printed more of these. Demand was super high. Product was very limited, in my opinion. And probably the best place to get it, I think Toys R Us just bankrupt. The best place to get magic cards from like old sets. I remember seeing Mind Seas. So Toys R Us, it's not like MSRP. It's more expensive than it, but it's not like crazy expensive. So I'm almost certain that you can go to Toys R Us, and if you go to enough of them, there's a high there's a much more there's a higher potential that in a Toys R Us you can have find a Troxa deck, just because most of the kids are into Pokemon, right? That's where they have the Pokemon League. So if Toys R Us has a discount, I'm going to buy all of their Magic cards. Because they have pretty, they have old stock. Like it reminds me, so Walmart, like people buy from Walmart all the time. They just like, sometimes they have old stuff, sometimes they don't. But Toys R Us is all just old stuff. It's like stuff that no one has bought for like two, even even like their DS games and stuff. Like 
obviously they went bankrupt for a reason, but a lot of the stuff that's a move, which includes a magic card. So I see old packs all the time at Toys R Us. When I mean old packs, I mean like Shards of Alora and that type of stuff. But the pr problem is they're so overpriced to begin with. Instead of like three ninety nine a pack, they're like six ninety nine a pack. It's like what what's going on here? Like, it's not that they know that these packs are more expensive and more valuable or old. It's just that they've always been like five ninety nine and six ninety nine. All right, let me tell you the story of Regrowth. Regrowth, I had many copies of it. When I mean many copies, I mean, my gosh, there was many copies. Like, just so many of them. And this was a card that I, at one time, believed was a common. And it's an uncommon. And my, my best play was Regrowth into a Regrowth into another Regrowth. I remember doing that as a child and feeling really cool. Uh, and I'm at school, I was like, yeah, I did it. Yeah. So, I mean, that's kind of like my play group now. We just do dumb stuff and no one's really interested in winning. Like the game eventually has to end. But no one's hyper competitive. We're just having fun. And I'm, I've become like super casual, but I don't know where these have gone. And I am shocked they were $61 because my gosh, I had a lot of them when I was a kid. I'm not sure how I accumulated so many of these beta um, regrowths, but for I'm positive that I believe they were common. That's how many I had. Now, do I still have them? I'm not sure. I need to check. Like you might pick, oh, well, why don't you, why don't you check? Because you have so many valuable cards. The problem is they're not sorted at all, and it's not really worth my time to sort them because there's just too many of them. Like, there's just too many. Um, maybe I can hire someone. So if you live, like, in Houston or, like, around Houston but are willing to travel to the Northeast, then, yeah, maybe, and you're willing to work for, like, $8 an hour, then I guess that would be good. I know I have these. I know I have them. I, I'm positive they're just in a random deck that I built a long time ago. And then when I was going through the decks, I took out the valuable cards, right, at the time. And this was probably not a valuable card at the time, so I kept it in the deck. That's what I do. So I will have a deck. I will segment the deck, and I'll take whatever I think is kind of valuable, and then I'll leave whatever else is in the deck. So the deck is like half a deck. Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.